Tonight on Civic Education, we take a look at voter education as INEC reveals that there are 6.7 million PVCs yet to be collected. And we also discuss OB's endorsement by PDP chieftains. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anako. As the Oyo State Governor Shea Makinde seeks re-election, the G5 governors of the opposition People's Democratic Party, also known as the Integrity Group, today stormed Ibadan for the campaign flag off of governor of the governor. Now there are insinuations that the aggrieved PDP governors may have abandoned their attempts to endorse a single presidential candidate to peculiar political realities in their states. Declaring his support for Mr. Obi in the New Year message to Nigerian young people, Mr. Obasanjo said that the Labour Party presidential flag bearer was better than any other contenders for the presidency and he was backed by Governor Samuel Autumn of Benue State. The PDP governors have been insisting that they would not support the party's presidential candidate if Iyocha Ayu, the party's national chairman, does not step down from his position. Well, joining us to discuss this uh, and more is Ose Aneni. He is a PDP chieftain and John Shaibu, who's a member of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us and Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Mary. It's always a Happy pleasure. Year, Great. All right. So I'm going to start with you. Um, it's very interesting that um, first we hear Governor Wike saying in the new year, he's going to let us know who he's going to pick as a, president, a preferred presidential um, candidate. This is for a governor who's a member of the PDP. Now, we all know it's no, no, no longer news that um, Governor Wike and, of course, the other governors of the G5 are not necessarily in a good place with the presidential flag bearer of the People's Democratic Party. Um, there were rumors that um, they were going to be meeting with the presidential candidates of the APC who had come out also to say uh, that this was not true. Um, but if these men, especially for Governor Autumn, who has um, you know, put his weight or thrown his weight behind the Labour Party presidential candidate. Is this not tantamount to um, anti-party activities? And also, Park Lack, who's a, a senior, um, an elder statesman in the PDP, who has decided also to, you know, put his weight behind the Labour Party. I'm wondering, will this not be counted as anti-party? Um, I mean, on the face of it, it is. Um, the party is very clear about what you know, it, it considers to be anti-party activities. And I think it's not a stretch of the imagination if um, party members start campaigning for, you know, candidates on other, in other political parties. So on the face of it, uh, yes, it is. I think where we sort of, the PDP sort of is different from other political parties. Um, again, I always remind people that we were born in the crucible of the shadow of uh, the military we were formed in 1998 and then took power from the military in 1999. And one of the things we, we have sort of like embedded in our DNA is this ability to resolve conflicts because we are aware that if you don't resolve conflicts, um, it sort of is um, a sure route to, to anarchy and chaos. So yes, you are absolutely correct on the face of it endorsing any other political party's candidate is anti-party, um, is an anti-party activity. And there are penalties that have been spelled out in our constitution, but I don't think it's anything we need to explore right now. Michael. I also don't think it's, um, it, 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 it's, it's a crisis we cannot resolve. And, and, I, and I mean that in, in, and I want to be very clear. Either we go into the 2023 elections with the G5 governors and we defeat the APC, or we don't go into the, the 20, 2023 elections and we also defeat the APC. Um, I'm a member of the Presidential Campaign Council. I'm the Deputy Director of Polling for, for the campaign. And I can tell you categorically that we have a very clear path to victory that goes around the G5 governors and their states. Of course, it's a much more difficult path. Um, but at this point, we, we really um, are not being held hostage or held to ransom by any one person. Uh, I'm happy you mentioned she Governor Shea McIndish's re-election bid. 
I don't know if you saw, um, I'll call it a show of force that PDP members in Oyo State put on yesterday, uh, where they had a street rally to show that indeed the PDP is Oyo and Oyo is PDP. So, I mean, it's not, you know, you see these endorsements coming, coming in and, and they, they, they do they do matter because most of these people do wield some influence. Um, Chief Clark wields some influence, Obasanjo wields some influence, but they will not determine the direction of this election. It would have been great if we got those endorsements, but we haven't, but the campaign will move on. I want to take you up on that, the last bit. You know, uh, for, for those who say Obasanjo, yes, is influential, many have said that all of the people the former president, Lucia Gorbasanjo, has endorsed or had endorsed won the elections. And if for this reason um, your candidate is, uh, like you said, unperturbed, um, who's to say that, you know, there's not trouble in the house and the party is not headed to a catastrophic end, being that these G5 governors um, have said that PDP will definitely win all of the seats in their state, but they never make mention of, you know, the presidential candidate. Does that not mean that whatever they're doing, they're steering their people and their voters in a different direction? So, um, to my mind, and I say this everywhere I go, I think one of the greatest living presidents, living or dead presidents Nigeria has ever had, um, is President Obasanjo. In both iterations, when he was a military head of state, remember he handed over to Shagari, um, and when he came back in 1999 and served for eight years. So I'm not going to come here and criticize his his pedigree or his character. Um, what I will, however, say, just correct you, uh, he endorsed my candidate, His Excellency Atiku, in 2019. Unfortunately, the Supreme Court ruled that we didn't win that particular election. So his endorsements are not prophetic. I just wanted to make that point clear. Um, he also, you know, he didn't say, you know, uh, you know and his, if you read his letter, his letter sort of like falls into two sections. In the first section, he criticizes the APC and sort of like reels out everything that's wrong with their government. And then in the second part, he says there are certain traits he's looking for in candidates shared by most of them. But what sort of like distinguishes or puts um, Peter B ahead of other people? It, it was a curious turn of phrase he used. He said he is a needle with a thread attached to him. And if he strays, he can pull his ears. Personally, I've said I have a problem with that because I don't want a president whose ears you can pull. Um, he also said that Dati Ahmed is a man of unimpeachable character. Again, I have a problem with that statement because Dati Ahmed has said several statements publicly that you know would ordinarily disqualify him from any democratic conversation. Recall that was Dati Ahmed that on the Senate floor said that homosexuals should be killed. Recall that was Dati Ahmed that said that the genocide that happened at, at uh, the Lekki Tollgate wasn't that and was a matter of semantics. Recall that Dati Ahmed that in 2011, a, a court ruled that he had actually rigged the election um, that took him into office in, this, um, in 2011. And then um, I think they pronounced that uh, McCarthy of the PDP was the authentic win winner of that election. So when Obasan just says these things, you know, um, and says these are the reasons why Peter B is ahead of the others, um, even though I cannot question his character and his pedigree, I might this time question his judgment. Let me, let me come to you, John. Um, going back to the beginning, the onset of this, you know, problem that led to the um, you know, the G5 governors becoming who they are today and standing as a force somewhat against the party leadership. Um, in hindsight, do you think that this could have been avoided? Um, and, I, I, and I'm not talking about if Governor Wiki were to be given the vice presidential position. I'm saying, could this matter have been resolved before now? Because as we speak, we have a few weeks before we start talking about the elections. And for, for, for want of a better way to put it, time is not on anybody's side. Um, could this have been avoided? Um, and could the PDP would have, uh, could the PDP um, been on a better footing as we head into this election season? Well, <clears throat> I, I would like to say this, that um, it could have been avoided, right? But then there's an issue that we all need, Nigerians need to know. Right? After the primaries, we understand, we all saw how they all met. Atiku Abubakar, our candidate, 
Mel Wiki and every other, uh, you know, people that are very important to the party, especially the governors. Now, what happened? After the, uh, what they call the nomination for uh, his uh, vice president, the whole game changed. And we started hearing, oh, let's have a southern uh, uh, chairman. How you should step down so we can have equity, we can have justice and fairness. The truth of the matter is this. From all indication and from the last uh, time, the last count, Atiku Abaka had met with, uh, with Wike, who seems to be the leader of the group, about five times. And he said that the gate, the, 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 the gate is still open for them to come in for dialogue. You see, it depends the mindset or the, the, what they had from the beginning or what they want to do is actually, I believe, is the drawback because the party is open. We want to win the election. No party wants to do away with their governors or such kind of high caliber, uh, you know, uh, leaders. So we want to win the election. But you see, when you when when you go to when you interrogate what is behind this, I think there is much more that uh, that that behind why they are recalcitrant. The point is this: the G five, I believe led by Governor Wiki, who is also a family member, I will call him because PDP is family. I believe there's something behind it. And that, for me, is what is actually pushing away the reconciliation what do you think as that, a party. What, what do you think that something water. is? Because you see, um, a lot of people thought that it was just about the, you know, the position of the vice presidency. But then it moved to a situation of a southern caucus, which we have discussed over and over again. And there had been, according to those in the camp of the presidential candidates of the PDP, that there had been opportunities for conversations to be had. At some point, your presidential candidate flew to London, um, but that seemingly looks like that door has been shut and your presidential candidate is moving on with his campaigns. But then looking at the fact that these governors are holding on to key states in the South, it makes me really wonder if it's just, you know, about Governor Wiki. Well, well, I will tell you what. Why did I say is Governor Wiki? If we remember, he lost the ticket to get the, the presidential ticket. Now, if every other, the four other uh, governors have one election or the other to run, we have Shea Makide who wants to come back for second term. We have others going for the Senate. So actually, the confidence that he had that he was going to get the ticket actually blew at his face. So now it's like a fish outside the water. And you know what it means in the power game. If you're not within the power, you are outside playing the, the what is it called, playing the godfather, you're still not in power. All right? So if they, he has, he's leading this set of people going from London to Spain to Paris, from one place to the other, right? For them to have series of meetings and for him to have met the candidate of APC, it tells you a lot that there's something far behind it. If you ask me, I will tell you this. And uh, I, I'm, I, I, I am saddened to say this. I believe that Obin, uh, what's it called, uh, Wiki never intended to work for a candidate. Because I don't see anything pushing him from war. You see? Go That's ahead. Nigeria for you. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes, we can That's hear Nigeria you. That's Nigeria for you. Nigeria oh, has so, happened. No, Nigeria has happened. So that is why we want to take we recover Nigeria back from APC. Now, what what are we saying here? So you find out that there's an issue in him sitting down to accept the fact that Atiku Abaka is our candidate. And the, 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 the good thing about it is this everybody is not conscious as a candidate who are on the ballot for Senate, for governorship, knowing that they are at a crossroad. And to get that crossroad, they are finding it difficult to go against their principal, who are called uh, Governor Wiki. So we, we, we are looking at a situation where they all come back, like I said, it's a family affair. That is why there has not been sanctioned, as ought to have been within the Constitution, for them to sanction them. But they have not actually come, aside from Otto, who I believe is playing a mind game with Bimwe people. All right? He's playing my game in the sense that 
from his, he belongs to from a metropolitan area in Benue State. He thinks by pandering towards will be because he's the only one that come out openly to say, okay, look, I'm going for another candidate, right? He thinks he might be able to use it to get his own Senate ticket. And that, for me, he will find out that PDP is quite strong and on ground there in Benue State. So it leaves a four. And with what happened yesterday in the battle, and today, again, we saw what happened. The people were chanting Atiku. So Atiku is there on ground, and he's, they know he has the capacity to recover Nigeria. So if they have that understanding that he has the capacity to re uh, rescue Nigeria, then it tells you that we, whether or not they agree to, to openly support him in your state, you'll find out that they will vote for Atiku. Okay. And that is it. Yeah. Let me oh, say, recently, Governor Wike was quoted to say that he was worried about the fact that um, a former principal of your presidential candidate is actually going for another person. But then it's, uh, it's an open secret that um, it, there's been no love lost between former President Lucia Guabasanjo and, of course, um, former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. I mean, for those of you who've read uh, his book, My Watch, um, there was... There were detailed, you know, information and certain things that um, uh, he had stated there uh, about your presidential candidates. Now, Governor Wiki, I'd like to quote, said um, that um, for Basanjo to pick Obi above the PDP candidate, Atiku Abubakar, who served him for eight years as vice president, every lover of PDP should be worried. Wiki said, I meant, I meant no bad. I mean that I'm only worried as a prominent PDP member. A man who loves PDP should be worried. I'm not mocking anybody. I was merely worried. My prayer was, look, let Obasanjo remain quiet and not say anything. That was all my prayer, but the prayer didn't work. So, um, Governor Wiki, as much as he's, you know, um, doing what he's doing, seems to still have his heart and soul within the PDP. Now, recently also, said we hear that the party chairman, because of the a push from members of the political party to sanction members of the G5. Um, some of their agents who are supposed to man certain polling units have been removed from the list of agents. Um, can you comment on this? Um, so I think you talked, you asked a three-pronged question. I'll answer the first one. Um, I don't think uh, I, um, Governor Wiki would get a glowing reference if, he, if we approached Governor Mechi, his boss, uh, to write to, to give us a reference and you know so it, it's politics you know people fall out with each other well, we and start well, saying he took over from him this is different from <laughs> no, a no, man I'm saying, who but, deputized but amichi, was, amichi was his boss he well, served he was under chairman amichi. he was even, a chairman in the local even, government yeah 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 even before he became governor so imagine if we went to amichi to, to you know uh, governor amichi please tell us about wiki we can only we can only imagine what amichi would say um this book i have in front of me because uh, i love i love reading this book is is a book of all the cases um Atiku has gone to court over it includes not just his presidential challenges but it includes an attempt by Abbasanjo to remove him as vice president. I don't know if you recall, um, and to strike him off the ballot. So more than than any other, you know, Atiku has, has has not just fought. He didn't just fight Abbasanjo to remain vice president. He fought Abbasanjo when there was this purported uh, third term bid. And so, if Abbasanjo is writing a book, I don't expect us to. I don't think we should expect him to to give him glowing references. Um, fast forward uh, maybe 12 years to 2019, I actually think it speaks of Atiku's competence. When in 2019, despite their previous bad blood and history, Obasanjo came out to endorse Atiku's candidacy in 2019. Um, so I, I just want to make, make, make that point. Um, you know, going into the elections, um, we, we've had campaigns, you know, we are now about 50 days to actual elections. And so the nature of these campaigns will change. You start seeing us, you know, knocking on doors. You know, have you gotten your PVC? If you do, make sure you come out. This is where your polling unit is. It's going to be a lot more of a logistical exercise. I saw in your in your opener you talked about INEX six point something million uncollected PVC. That already is a logistical challenge. Parties and voters have to face. And so going into the elections, we we are. are our approach is 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 going to be more logistical. So when you talk about moving agents and that that um, 
you know, moving moving pieces on a board. That's what that is. That's the only thing I can I can and I can say about it. A, we want to win so this election. This and direct you know, attempt I, 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 to disarm members of or people who are um, loyal to the G five governors. You don't think that this is. Um, Senator Yocha Ayu's move to also, one way or the other, uh, somewhat cripple, um, you know, the so-called structures that these G5 governors have. You don't think that that's the case? You are talking about a PDP structure. Um, I don't see how strengthening that PDP structure is somehow crippling or weakening um, any other um, invading um, body. You know, the PDP is one organization. Governor Wiki is a member of the PDP, as is Shea Makinde and the other governors. And anything that the PDP needs to do to win the elections, as long as it's within the ambit of the law, I think it's, it's perfectly fine. Um, again, we are going into elections to win. Um, and, and I was hoping we would have a conversation of why it's so important that we win this election. It's not just to seek power or to gain power for the sake of gaining power. It's because things are so bad, you know. Um, Buhari, President Buhari just signed um, almost like a, a, the budget, the 2023 budget, that has record levels of a budget deficit on top of a 770, 77 trillion naira debt uh, he's leaving behind. You know, and so I worry about not just the financial um, health of this country, it's our insecurity, it's unemployment, it's access to education, it's healthcare. Almost every sector that you want to talk about is failing or has failed. And like uh, my brother John said, our mission is not just to gain power for power's sake. It's to start to recover everything we have lost under the misrule of the APC. That's why I'm on your station every day. That's why we are campaigning loudly. That's why it matters that, and, and I keep on saying it, that's why it matters that your position must set aside egos and decide and determine and realize that the problem Nigeria faces is so great that we cannot allow egos or petty grievances to stop us from achieving what we need to achieve. And that is to remove the APC from power, and that is to put into office a candidate that has a plan that can get Nigeria working again. Um, picking up from where Ose stopped, um, you know, petty grouses. Um, John, let's talk about the PDP yeah. in Lagos. We see that... Uh, there's also some crack within the party, which is somewhat obvious. The party chieftain seems to be um, also on the side of these G5 governors. And I'm talking about one of the this most senior um, you know, members of the party, Chief Body George, um, who had at some point also supported the PDP caucus and, and supported Governor Wiki's position alongside other you know, governors. Um, and then you do have a Lagos state where it's always been the APC. And for once, you now have one person who's, well, according to the PDP, is appealing to all. But if we have this type of crack within the Lagos PDP, and then we have it all over the national with the G5 governors, um, how do we see the PDP winning the election? Because I see an say saying we're going to win the elections. Our duty is to win the election. We want to win our bad governance or misrule. How do you win when your house is on fire? <laughs> You know, the most interesting thing about this election, let me ask from here, is that while people think we're losing, we're actually gaining more. We're seeing a lot of people coming on board, you know, defecting to, into the party. You know, from Kaura, we saw them in numbers and droves. In Niger State, Ibeto is there, from former ambassador. We saw deputy government, deputy governors. In Sokoto State, we have about four aspirants, governmental aspirants from APC that have just joined us as of yesterday. So we have droves of people coming to join the party. Even in Delta State, when Governor Koa, who is our vice presidential candidate, was going around, a lot of thousands of people decided to burn their brooms and come under the umbrella. So we're not catching any fright. The only thing we want is the unity of the party so we all enjoy the recovery uh, together. Because the truth of the matter is this. Minor grosses are, you know, comes up in the party. Because like Governor Ruke said, so let me borrow his word. He said, how can I leave a, a PDP that, 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 uh, that only has head Why APC has the cancer? Now, coming to Lagos, you see, Lagos is very peculiar. Uh, Jagaban or Timbu or APC or whatever, they've had sway for over 23 years. Now, as a time for a fresh breath, which Jandon represents, you know, 
But it's so it's so alarming. Like I say, is the gentleman who, but me, I'll say it as a tease. You know, is I've said it here before mm -hmm. that I'm 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 so worrisome that uh, Chief Body George, who ought to be glad that we have someone who also can pivot a new change and a new leadership in Lagos, is actually going against the candidacy of Jadon, who has who has turned. A new who has made Lagos the campaign strategy as uh, he has uh, you know uh, engaged quite is quite innovative. He has uh, he has gone to about, over a hundred and twenty unit uh, words to know what actually you know the problem of people are, and in that part, in one of the words they said they've never seen any gubernatorial candidate. That tells you a lot. It means that some people were writing results at the center and presenting, and they tell you if it's have won. But this time, thank God that President Buhari signed into law the amended electoral law in which there will be use of beavers. So we will see this time where they will write the result from because John Don is the momentum. You know, he's a frost in Lagos. His own kind of campaign is, is crash rooted. Okay. All right. He's okay. going to the ground. I just, I just want to quickly, before, before you conclude, yeah. I want to quickly take you back. Yeah. Chief Body Judge had been quoted to say yeah. that he would not. Um, expose who he's voting for uh, during the elections, yes. um, come the elections. And he did not in any way mention that it would be the PDP presidential candidates. Also, he said that Jandor had been brought as a mole to come and divide the party as this was not the plan. And this is why he's apprehensive. Again, let's not forget that he, you know, uh, migrated from the APC into the PDP. And there seems to be some, you know, um, there are people. There's a division in the in the party. There are see, people who see. still don't feel safe around Andor, even though, as you have said, he's the chosen one. But if Chief Tains, as he, as big as Chief Body Judge, have concerns about you know who he is and what he brings to the table, should the people of Lagos not be worried also? No, you see, there is. It's like I said. I will me. I will hit it on the head. Chief Body Judge, listen. He is supporting Vivo of the Liberal Party. He actually. Push label, uh, so you're accusing to your party chief chair of anti-party activities. Is, is that fact. it? Yes, it's a fact. You see, that is why when you say what you have proof? Opening, yes, it's a listen. Bibo himself said it. He said it on an interview. I think it's on a rise. He said, Yes, Chief Body George knows quite a well he's going to label. All right. So there's no there's no gain safe for what is happening there. All right. Me, so knowing, me knowing that you're group. going to a place does not mean that I approve of it or I've given my accent. He, appro he approves of it. He approves of it. See, there are things we know in politics that you might not just come out to tell people. But I can tell you, he cannot beat his heart. He's an, he's, he's an elder. He cannot tell us he's not aware or he did not make, uh, what's it called, vivo to go to labor. All right. If not, what is stopping him from supporting a Jandon who has met him, who has, he has lived, lived with him, I've told him his programs. All right. So I, this is a time in which we need to take Lagos back. And I keep saying this. For in three years, Tinubu have been holding sway. What has Body Joy brought into the table? We have not won gubernatorial, uh, what they call, governorship election in Lagos State. So why now? Why that now that we have a chance to do that, that he's going this route? As an elder, he ought to, you know, put the house together and ensure that everything was, look, for heaven's sake, I cannot because my child hurts me or can I, can I that <laughs> All right, just All right. So, that, so, so that we I, wrap I, things I, up, I, we need to go. Me. We need to go, gentlemen. So, um, Ose, will the PDP ever get past this hurdle? Because it looks like uh, something that's going to keep raising its ugly head until election day. Do you see this going away anytime soon? I just want to, quick, I just want to quickly and remind my brother, uh, you cannot blame the victim. And she bodied George as well as the millions of Lagosians, a victim of, um, I'll call it the neo-feudalism neo that uh, Tinubu has foisted upon Lagos. You know, so if you have a one-party state in Lagos and the symptoms of that one-party state, you know, they, they, they fall and, and you know, they, you, you, you rest it squarely at body loan. You cannot blame um, she bodied George, who might just be exhibiting the sy sy symptoms of almost 23 years of misrule under the APC and under one man. And I worry that, you know, if they say they want to do in Lagos what they did, what in Nigeria, what they've done in Lagos, 
you know, we might end up with a one-party nation. You know, these these people risk ruining our democracy, and that's why I say, you know, for me, it goes just beyond the partisan conversations. Look at what they've done in Lagos, where one man decides who the governor is going to be. Is that the man you want to become, to make president or allow to become president of Nigeria? So do are we going to get past it? I don't think, uh, Marianne, we have a choice. We have to get past it. Um, it. It literally is almost a cause or a crusade at this point. It's not. It's not an. It's not just a game. It's not an idle side hobby that we are. We are, you know, venturing upon. We are literally wrestling for the soul of this nation. And you know, I'm hoping maybe at the end of this thing, you will, we will also live here with with the endorsement of Marianne and plus politics, <laughs> possibly. Play your, play your thank, part. You so, thank you so much for being here. Serenity is a PDP chieftain. John Shaibo, also a member of the PDP. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. I am not endorsing you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a quick break, and when we return, we'll be talking voter education and, of course, a young man and his platform that is encouraging people and giving them 23 reasons why they should vote come 2023.